Hi, I'm Bert. Um, this is pastori time. We've sort of changed our approach a little bit here in pastori time HQ, um, in that we're trying to sort of just vlog um, all the time. So that way we can, you know, capture our thoughts on books we're reading and whatever as we're reading them. Um, as opposed to doing kind of end of month wrap ups and things like that, because you know end of month sort of wrap up often you kind of forget half of the stuff, and you're not really in the moment of you know being in that sort of zone of that particular book or whatever. Um, and I don't really like filming them as much, so I I, I kind of like just sort of vlogging um, through the days. Um, if I've got some thoughts, I'll share them then, and then we'll just put a chunk of those clips together and put them out as a vlog. But what I wanted to do today, as kind of a little kind of compromise type thing, I guess, is a little bit of a wrap up of things that I've enjoyed recently, um, sort of coming up to the end of January now. So kind of stuff, I look back over my favourite things of January. So books, music, whatever. Because um, I thought that would be a fun sort of thing to do, just to chat about good stuff. Um, so I've, I've made a little list here of things um, and I guess I thought I, you know maybe I'll probably start with books should I do that so that way if you're not interested in any of the other stuff you can just kind of stop there um, so it's been the month of the um, now that's what I call summer readathon hosted by Karen and Heather um, and that's kind of been a little bit of a sort of structure to my month in terms of I've got a few things that I would like to sort of tick off um, in this kind of weird month which is January is um, so that's really been really good, and I've really enjoyed especially um, reading graphic novels this month. Um, it's just that sort of little sense of accomplishment. I don't necessarily buy, so I've bought loads out of the library, and the library's so good, isn't it, for that? So um, I, I can I, I really appreciate how much work goes into graphic novels, and yet at the same time how quickly um, you can read them. So they're just ideal for the library. Um, I also really enjoyed my buddy read with Heather, although Moonraker itself, the book, the Ian Fleming book that we read together, was no great shakes, but it was fun. Um, that was kind of like the most fun reading experience of the month. But my favourite book of the month by far has been um, the Baxter Jury memoir, Chaise Lange, which is um, him kind of recalling his childhood mostly. Well, actually, weirdly, he sort of lived in various places that I've lived. Um, so he spent some time in Newport in Wales, but also around sort of um, Hertfordshire and sort of Milton Keynes type areas, um, as well as London. Um, so obviously he's the son of Ian Jury, and his parents were sort of separated um, when he was a child. So he kind of went sort of back and forth a little bit. It's just really well told, and... Um, made me laugh a lot. It was also quite sort of sad and like there's kind of no um, sense of uh, structure to his childhood. So he's very much sort of doing what he wants. Um, he spends a lot of his time sleeping on a chaise lounge in um, back in Ian Jury's sort of house or flat when Ian Jury wasn't really around much. So he was a lot of the time left in the keeping or under the supervision of this guy known as the Sulfate Strangler who's kind of a bit of a, um, <coughs> like, acid-damaged roadie that kind of worked for Ian Jury. And uh, he was kind of left with him. Um, so there's lots of sort of drug use. Um, so as you can imagine, um, it's kind of an unconventional childhood. But the book's just full of, like, um, really sort of snapshot memories, little anecdotes throughout his youth. Um, and... I just loved it. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of him anyway and his music. Um, and you can sort of really feel that voice, his little lyrical voice in here. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe you do have to have a slight interest in, in, in him or Ian Jury maybe um, to sort of as a gateway into it. But um, I just thought this was great. And I, I'm really, really glad I got it. Um, so that's my reading highlight of the month by far. Um, another book that I just have been sort of flicking through, which is a gift that I got from my um, mother-in-law for Christmas, um, which is this, the Linda McCartney um, Tashin book. It's just so beautiful. 
um, so life in photographs and it's it just it feels beautiful and it's just full of I love Melinda McCartney's photographs so much and I follow sort of her the page of her stuff on Instagram and every time one of her pictures comes on you can just sort of immediately recognize it as one of hers somehow and I'm not sure how she does that there's lots of obviously there's lots of pictures of Paul and her time um, on the farm with Paul and, and touring with um, Wings there's lots of other musicians and stuff as well I love this one in here because she was obviously a, a photographer from before she met Paul um, but there's just some really beautiful sort of family shots and I just love her style so much um, so I'm so so glad to have this book you know like not necessarily one I would have bought for myself but it's just so so beautiful and it spans her um, you know her whole life it's so beautiful. Um, the music I've been listening to this month has been largely influenced by me reading this towards the end of the month, which is Nothing But A Good Time, The Spectacular Rise of uh, Glam Metal by Justin Quirk. Um, so I've mentioned um, in, a, in the vlog, um, so the music I've been listening to this month has largely been 80s glam metal, pomp rock, hair metal, whatever you want to call it um, and thanks to this book I've discovered loads more checked out some amazing videos um, of uh, sort of peak 80s bands like Cinderella um, would recommend you to go and watch the Kiss video for Lick It Up which is some kind of weird sort of dystopian scenario where it could be possibly that Kiss are the only men left around um, brilliant video we'll link it down below it's the worst thing you've ever seen. The book that I so I mean, if you're into if you're at all into that scene, I would recommend um, Van Halen Rising, which is how a Southern California backyard party band saved heavy metal by Greg Renoff. This is really great because it's um, about the um, pre-fame years of Van Halen, kind of how they got together, how they were like touring for like ten years. Um, trying to make it um before they actually got a record deal um and i just really loved this book so if you're into that sort of 70s keg party metal days of confused kind of thing this is a really really fun read um would recommend but as you can imagine well, as a gemini when i get into a headspace i sort of really go there so where like all i want is everything to feel the same um so, you know, if I'm reading a book about something, I want to listen to music that sort of fits that and watch films. So I'm very much in a sort of satanic panic 80s kind of mood. Um, so my my films have largely um, been related to that feel or, you know, heavy metal, horror, slashes, um, that kind of mood. Um, and at the end of last year, we did um, watch Hellraiser for the first time. We still haven't read um, Clive Barker at all, um, either of us, Sean and I. Um, I, I when we were searching for the Hellbound Heart for ages, but it, it seems to be unavailable at the moment. So we bit the bullet and um, we watched Hellraiser. Um, this was so weird and so great and so gay in a kind of a real sort of SNM horror, like a, a, a just bizarre world of, of pain and um, slightly skeezy 80s British um, sauciness. Um, and we loved it. Sean especially just fell in love with Hellraiser. Um, and then, uh, so this month, we watched Hellraiser 2, Hellbound. Um, your, suffering, your suffering will be legendary, even in hell, he says, Pinhead says in this one. Um, and we watched this a couple of nights ago, and it was brilliant. So good. Um, possibly even better than the first one, although I, I think Sean would probably disagree with me. It has a bit more of a sort of uh, cosmic horror slash fantasy sort of feel to it than the first one, which is kind of um, lots of MC Escher type, you know, visuals. Um, but really, really into the Hellraiser series at the moment. I f I'm finding them, like, genuinely disturbing and quite... Um, 
gross. Um, but then so unlike anything else that I've seen that I'm actually really enjoying that experience. And I think, you know, films like this do sort of put you back in your uh, sacral chakra, you know, in a good way. So, uh, Hellraiser, if you haven't seen them, be cautious, but they're so weird and so good. Um, and in that same sort of uh, 80s flamboyant over the top kind of way, Cyborg has been one of my favourite films of the month. I'd never seen this before. Um, so Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, post-apocalyptic, dystopian kind of Mad Max type film. Um, but better than Mad Max because this has got like martial arts in it. I'm a big fan of, you know, sword and sorcery type movies from the 80s. Because I, 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 they do have a real sort of heavy metal uh, feel to them. Um, and although this isn't one of those, it does sort of fit in nicely with that kind of, you know, that kind of mood. There's a deadly plague that's happened. And there's a vaccine which um, they need, you need to get hold of, you know. Uh, the evil people don't want the vaccine because they're kind of quite liking society as it is. Sort of, you know, like gangs and like being in charge of this, your town. They're all named after um, guitars. So yeah, Van Damme is called Gibson Rickenbacker in this. It doesn't get much better than that in terms of cinema. Completely unlike any of the things, that, any of those things that I've mentioned so far. Um, probably my favourite film that I've seen this this month has been uh, The Small World of Sammy Lee. Um, it's a Ken Hughes film from the sixties. It's black and white. Um, I guess kind of kitchen sinky film. Um, it feels very much part of that early 60s British New Wave, sort of um, influenced by the French New Wave, so sort of lots of handheld cameras, lots of real life sort of street scenes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's about a guy who is kind of an au pair in a sleazy strip club and he owes money and it sort of follows him over these kind of like seven or eight hours where he has to raise this money um, to pay back this sort of gambling debt that he has. Um, so it's a very kind of, you know, working class, um, tragedy comedy, you know, Billy Liar, Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning kind of feel. Um, and I, that's kind of my favourite cinema. So uh, I'm really just really glad that this has sort of come out uh, and been restored on DVD because um, it's going to go with my favourites now. Um, yeah, I do love that era um, of British cinema. So those are my entertainments summed up um my highlights of of the month food wise has, has definitely been shan's pizza um so if you saw the vlog you saw her creating the dough we kind of the pizzas were so good we didn't weren't able to film us eating them because it was too much of a like a spiritual experience to capture on film but they were so good like the best pizzas ever really genuinely um that I can't stop thinking about them. So uh, the reason we haven't, or Sean hasn't, because I've, I've never made pizza before, and Sean has, um, the reason we haven't had them for so long has been because our oven still doesn't work, <laughs> um, which is like happened at the beginning of the um, first lockdown during the pandemic, and um, we just haven't had it fixed. So it's an air fryer pizza. So we were able to sort of make lots of little small ones. It was just so good, so delicious. Um, the other highlight, of course, has been finally, after months and months of searching, finding the Marks and Spencers uh, vegan panda bao buns. They're not with the sort of the plant food area with the uh, other sort of free from or, you know, vegan area. They're actually kept in, as you walk in, in the Thai and Chinese area. They're just merged into that. They're so soft. You know, I just I, I really love soft food. And they had like a mushroom um, kind of mix, almost kind of hoisin type flavour mix inside, centre. And they're so good. A big thing that I've really enjoyed doing recently has been sort of spring cleaning. So at the moment the sun is out again. We've had a few sort of sunny days this month, which is kind of, you know, just have to just enjoy them for the rare occurrence that they are. And... Um, it's given me a bit of energy and sort of that feeling of spring cleaning a bit. So um, I have done quite a bit of um, rearranging, tidying and dusting around the flat. That always makes me feel really good. Um, especially like the hallway sort of bookcase area. 
it tends to get really dusty and spiderwebby. So I completely rehauled that. And in the process of doing all of this sort of spring cleaning, we've managed to unhaul loads and loads and loads of books. So although you can't really tell, and it doesn't might not look like it, there are a lot less books in the flat because there are a lot less um, behind the piles. So like in the sort of cabinet areas, um, a lot of those, and a lot of them still do, have like sort of books stacked behind them that you can't see. Um, so the one in the hallway had that, and those are all gone now. I managed to sort of, you know, um, fit them all in around the flat in other areas. We also have a designated uh, horror section in the bedroom, which we haven't had, really had because horror wasn't really a thing in our lives until quite recently. I'll show you that. Um, so that's... So that's just here. As you can see, just kind of on top of this radiator area. What can you see? So yeah, there's not a huge amount of books in it, but it's quite nice to have a little area for horror. Also, this area, this um, hallway thing, is a little bit lower than it than it once was, um, and is much more representative of things that we've already read. So we've read all of these, and we've decided to keep them. So they're kind, they're kind of keepers. Um, finally, shout out to my mum, who's been making some excellent Instagram content around her shop, which is Marisa Helen in Leighton Buzzard. Um, so she does videos where she sort of, you know, like, um, wears her outfits that she's selling. She's got, I think she's had a sale on, um, and she sort of models them. Um, she seems to have found some kind of weird playground area where she's been modeling them uh, and dancing. She seems to be loving life and um, her favourite thing is dancing. So um, I'm glad to see her doing that with some nice clothes. Um, that's been a joy to watch my mum um, being her true self, really. My favourite one was one where she, um, just because there's a swing set wherever she is mod doing the modelling, and she did, um, you know, when one video sort of approached the swing set while she was dancing, and like, it looked like she was going to go on the swing, then she just decided to like just push it and then just do a little twirl. Which, no one saw that coming. Um, so anyway, um, here's to February. Um, I'd like to just say thank you to uh, Karen and Heather for hosting a readathon this month, which I really enjoyed. Um, uh, I, I keep. Uh, I know that Sage at the moment is doing the thing where they try and sort of find different people's um, channels that are doing like readathons and stuff like that. So if there is any sort of good. Uh, read forms going around please do let me know or sort of uh, any kind of uh, good tags new tags um, I'd be up for that as well keep me posted take care of yourselves and I will speak to you soon